Hello everyone and welcome to this latest video discussion as part of the RICS Tech Partner Programme. My name is Andrew Knight and I've been with RICS for over 12 years now. I work in the knowledge and practice part of the organisation and my role is to look at the effect of data and technology right across the built and natural environment. And with over 110,000 members working worldwide, working right across the property life cycle through land, planning and development, construction, finance, valuation, brokerage, building and asset management and end of life, there's obviously a huge canvas upon which data and technology is having a profound and very valuable effect. And indeed, our members also work across all the different asset types, whether that's land itself, commercial, residential, alternative assets and infrastructure. And once again, faced with all the issues around things like ESG and climate change, huge uh, areas where data and tech can help. And I'm really happy to have uh, Barry Trout to join us today from Legacy. So uh, welcome to the conversation, Barry. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. And it's always nice before we get into the kind of bits and bites, as it were, to, to really just get a bit of, of your backstory and indeed the, the, uh, the origin story of Legacy. Fantastic. So Barry Trout, CEO of Legacy, as, as, as you say, I started my career actually in investment banking and then moved into consulting and spent a lot of time at the Boston Consulting Group in, uh, in Sydney, Australia. And then in the last few years, I, I became interested in technology and, and property. And I was CEO of a, a technology and recruitment group with, with multinational operations. And then I was COO of a property development investor where I really got a, a keen interest in the sector and then decided to combine the two interests, technology and property, and, and was fortunate enough to be discovered by legacy. And, and, and here we are. And so how, how did Legacy start and, and, and arguably what, what's its vision? What's it trying to do? What, what problems is it solving? So Legacy is a fully automated and auditable carbon emissions accounting and reporting platform for real estate assets. Um, we were founded about four years ago by Magnus Nurbo, who was a former Stanford University faculty member and four other co-founders who were super passionate about making CO2 data and reporting much more transparent and actionable in the real estate sector at a far lower cost than was being provided and a far easier solution for clients. So the vision of the company is really to empower all companies with any exposure to real estate to create a positive legacy for the planet. And we do this by making sustainability operational by providing what we essentially say are quite low effort or effortless solutions to carbon management. And uh, why did it particularly focus on real estate? I suppose in some respects, I'm answering my own question because obviously real estate, as you know, has a huge impact at the moment negatively, you know, in terms of emissions, uh, let alone other pieces. But what, what, what was the, the thinking around focusing so much on real estate? Yeah, great question, Andrew. I think, as, as you know, the, the real estate sector was responsible for a huge contribution to global emissions, uh, global greenhouse gas emissions, around 7% comes from the real estate sector. And if you include the construction process, around 40% of global emissions come from this sector. So there's, there's massive potential for carbon reduction and it's, it's really rapidly changing. And, and we see really four forces driving that change. The first is compliance. And as you know, and I, and I think as, as, the, as the, the RICS members will know, there's already very stringent legislative emissions requirements coming in the UK and the EU and globally, TCFD, SFDR, CSRD, EU taxonomy, etc. We see these only going to intensify and companies, frankly, just, just must comply with these regulations. That's the first one. The second one is that the capital markets are really driving a huge change in mindset in this sector. Simply capital is flowing to greener buildings. The cost of capital is falling for greener buildings. And it's investors are beginning to deselect non-green buildings from their portfolios. So put simply, greener buildings are more valuable. The third reason is, or the third driver is tenants of real estate assets are beginning to demand that their employees work in much greener buildings and employees are deselecting themselves from working from companies that don't have the environment at the very top of their agenda. And I think fourthly, stakeholders at large, the public at large, anyone with an exposure to a product or a building or a company wants to see that company occupying a green building. So the whole ecosystem of the property industry is being driven towards having a much less 
or much greener footprint. So in terms of actually what your platform's doing, what are the actual detailed problems that you're solving? Because clearly on the, on the face of it, it's just what well, we just need to account for our carbon, but it's clearly not as simple as that, is it? <laughs> Exactly. Well, I think I think there's, there's there's probably three things, Andrew, and I think you've hit the nail on the head. That's the first one. I think firstly, you know, we enable clients to comply with current and forthcoming regulations by providing them with full emissions data coverage across the entire portfolio by asset and by different subsets of the portfolio and enabling to do really transparent and auditable reporting. And the, and the auditable piece is really important. Our data enables clients to really drill down into the, the sources and the methodologies of all the calculations such that it's fully auditable. So that's the first one. I think the second one is that we really do enable our clients to enhance the value of their portfolios by providing them with insights which into which buildings are underperforming a benchmark, enable them to select a benchmark, which, which buildings do they need to take action upon to mitigate emissions from those buildings, and, and also ultimately to, to maybe sell buildings to parties that might be better equipped to reposition those buildings as, as greener assets. And I think the third problem that we solve is, as, as I mentioned earlier, this, this used to be very expensive and time consuming, using consultants to go and find data from, from various sources. We've really made that much more efficient and easy and automated. So the, the, the money saving of actually performing these activities is huge and, and, and these things are actually pretty straightforward now. And who are some of the kind of clients that you've got adopting this early on? As you said, there are lots of drivers here, and I'm sure most sort of asset managers are, are very aware of, of both those compliance issues, but also just that, as you say, making their assets attractive and continuing to make them attractive. Who are the kind of people that, that have really woken up to this and, and are kind of working with you and hopefully are ahead of the curve, but perhaps pulling the rest of the sector with them? Yeah, we've, we've been extremely fortunate, actually, Andrew. In, in the very beginning of our existence, we were lucky enough to form a partnership with a, a pension fund in Denmark called ATP, which is the largest public pension fund. Um, we co-developed a lot of our platform with them. Because they're a public pension fund, they have extremely stringent requirements and, and we've been able to fulfill those. And as a result, we've built the platform with the most stringent requirements in mind. So our clients, we really focus on pension funds, fund managers, banks and insurance companies, and, and we cover some of the largest players in the Nordics at the moment. And we also cover private property portfolio owners who have anyone who's a large exposure to real estate assets, as well as the administrators that look after property for investors. So we have a, a slew of different clients with, with extremely exacting demands. <laughs> and, and what would you say has been the kind of specific approach that Legacy has taken? Because clearly there, there are people out there doing this same kind of task in terms of carbon accounting. And I guess given the challenges and the, uh, and perhaps dare I say, the, the lack of data in, in the real estate sector, what kind of approaches and what kind of technology have you used to make sure that you really do hit the nail on the head to use the English phrase? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we've tried to differentiate ourselves in, in a couple of ways, because as you say, there are a few competitors out there and there's, there are many, that the, 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 the sustainability sector is huge and growing. So the two ways in which we've, we've really tried to focus, one is on the quality of our data. So our ability to collect and organize data and make the calculations very accurate and transparent, we think is a real differentiator. So the quality of the data is really important, not only from, for compliance, which is essential to get right, as, as everybody knows, but also around drawing insights from that data so that we can make decisions Around, so we can help clients make decisions around what we talked about before, which buildings to make greener, which buildings need work, which don't need work, which, which can be maybe sold, which can be bought, and, and tracking all of those activities over time. So that's the first one. And, and as you know, we've, we've been built with sustainability in mind, given the heritage of the founders. And sustainability really drives or underpins all of the calculations that are inherent in the platform. The second one is around focus on the real estate sector. I think there are many companies that are covering many different sectors. We like the real estate sector because, as we said, there, there is such huge potential for carbon reduction in the sector and, it, and it's fast. You know, we tried to count the number of buildings in, in the UK and the EU and we, we kind of gave up when we got to several million. So we, uh, we, like to, we, like to, we like to think that we've got deep knowledge of, of the largest property clients 
and how to work with them to enable them to use our data to make decisions which will ultimately create, create value in their portfolios. And from your perspective, I mean, in some respects, it's probably been quite well rehearsed, this sense of the potential risks that asset owners face. But how would you summarise what those risks are if they don't act and get this kind of carbon accounting in place? Yeah, I, th I think it's, it, it's, it's really important that they act. I think there's, again, it's probably the, the same two or three drivers. I think the first one is around the very stringent emissions requirements that are already in place. And, and we see that, as we said, only intensifying. Um, I think the companies that don't comply not only risk being fined, but they may experience negative internal, external publicity around, around not complying with those regulations. So that, that's the first kind of big one is kind of the bedrock of where we started really. But I think where we've, we've moved to is around really helping clients to measure emissions properly so that they can then begin to understand the impact that they have on the value of their portfolios and take emissions to to reduce those emissions so that the, the the groups that we mentioned earlier the investors the tenants the employees the wider stakeholders can act in a way such as to shift their attention and their capital towards those buildings and not away from them so as as, as we know the value of less green buildings i, I think will continue to fall and such buildings run the risk of becoming stranded. Mm. You know, some portfolios will, will not be able to house those buildings in their portfolio because they're, they're just not green enough. And these stranded assets will have a, a disproportionately low value compared to the greener assets. And then, then I think the third one, I think as, as we've touched upon already, I think that, that the negative PR of failing to act for companies, especially who, who sell products, who have large exposure to property, um, they simply won't be v being viewed to doing the right thing by their customers. And you know they, they won't be doing the right thing for the planet. And, and we really are trying to help real estate owners do the right thing for the planet ultimately. As you say, it's a fairly powerful mix of kind of reputational, financial, compliance type issues that it really just isn't going away, to be blunt, is it? Now, I mean, you know, if I was an asset manager with a reasonably large portfolio and I wanted to get started, and I guess I probably had concerns that I didn't really have all the data I needed, what does the journey look like to actually start making this happen? Because I guess it can be quite daunting, perhaps, depending on the, the quality of the data sets people already have on what might be quite a sprawling international uh, portfolio of different kinds of assets. Indeed, I think daunting is, is a really good word. You know, having spoken to many clients now, they enter the process being a little daunted because often they've, they've tried to do this themselves. They know how many disparate data sets there are, they're, they know how many gaps they have in their data, and they're well aware of the, the quality of the data often is not good enough to, 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 to comply with the regulations and to, to make good reports. So the, the, the two things that we do, uh, at first, we get the addresses of the buildings. If the clients send us the address, we can onboard those buildings onto the platform on our, our entry level solution. And then as we get deeper into conversations, we need things like the, the some technical language with the API keys of the building management system, for example, uh, or access to their billing mechanism so we can pull data from, from the bills. But we're, we're really looking to interact with the building management system but if we don't have that we can use the build data and if we don't have that we can use the address and pull the energy performance certificates on the buildings really easily so it's it's very easy to get started and we have a fantastic approach to customer success and we we hold clients hands in the early stages and then you know we really um are there to to assist at all times throughout the whole process and beyond uh, and I guess it's, I suppose it's an important point to kind of cover here that, as you know, you know the the vast majority of buildings aren't smart buildings. They don't. They're not full of sensors. They don't necessarily have a building management system. So, asset managers have got to start the journey, irrespective of whether they have a lot of buildings that one might rudely call dumb buildings as opposed to smart ones. So, because you know there is such a long tail of assets in in that kind of situation, isn't there? In, indeed, and I think that if you, you hit a great point in that the, the data quality varies so much building to building. And one of the great things that we have built, you know, we recognize this when we started, because clearly when we started out, we, you know, we knew about it, as much about this as anyone else does, which is not very much. But luckily, after four years, we've kind of 
learned. And I think that the three le levels of data quality that we have are, you know, the energy performance certificate is the really the basic level. And, we, you know, we have, for example, all of the energy performance certificates in, in the UK and all of them in Denmark and so on on, on the platform. So we're able to, to, pull, those, to, uh, to pull those pretty easily. Um, the second layer is around, you know, how much is the, is the company actually spending on, on energy, on heat, on water? And we can pull the bills or the CSV file from the finance department or whatever it is to, to pull that actual consumption information. But the, but the very best way is for us to integrate with the building management system or with the energy companies or the data sources that the energy companies provide to. So the governments have bodies of data that we are integrating with and have integrated with to really measure the actual consumption of the buildings. So we like to say we're, we're good at four things. We're good at figuring out the actual consumption, number one. Number two, we're good at pulling out the emissions factors. So how much CO2 was actually emitted for any given consumption time or date for any given building. The third one is around where we like to say we're, it sounds like we're blowing our own trumpet here, but we're, 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 we're good at doing the calculation. So the calculations that we do are all completely open and transparent and GHG protocol compliant so that any accountant in the world can look into them and say, okay, that's fully compliant. You can post that carbon report on your annual report or your website and it's very accurate. And the fourth thing, we're, we're good at helping clients to do their reporting. So our data and the calculations feed directly into various reports like PREM and GRESB and GHG so that they can be readily um, populated with, with legacy data, which, you know, we like to say customers can hang their hat on that data. So what have been some of the impacts you've seen as, as your clients have, have started using legacy in terms of their sort of behaviors or, or, or you know the impact on them? So I think the, the, the three main ones, and it probably starting to sound a bit like a broken record, but one, one is reduced time and money in collecting the data, making the calculations and, and throughout the audit, auditing process. So a much cheaper, much easier way to approach this. I think this, the second impact is around probably peace of mind around compliance. So, you know, many asset managers or portfolio owners or administrators are at first a little bit nervous about this because the, the legislative documentation is just vast. And, you know, we, I, I have not read it, but people in our business have and uh it's a it's an extremely daunting proposition so we've we've built the the product with this in mind so it gives them peace of mind that they can comply with the regulations i think the third one is probably around uh, as we talked about quicker and more informed portfolio decisions based on the insights that we can give clients from the data so they can make decisions around the buildings, as, as we talked about earlier, which to, to mitigate, which to sell, which to buy, etc. And then I think finally, it's around, you know, giving them the opportunity to speak positively about their actions, not only internally to their employees, but also externally to whatever stakeholders. And, and I think it's, it's increasingly important that companies, you know, do the right thing and uh, make a noise about that so that their peers and, and, and competitors can start to do the right thing as well and ultimately we're thriving towards our vision in that way. I suppose it's important to highlight that fact that, that you know we use the phrase carbon accounting but actually that's only half the story you, you then have all this information to drive change to be more active in your asset management either in terms of disposals or acquisitions or you know retrofits because I suppose it's important not to see this as a passive reporting solution it's actually a set of actionable insights really isn't it? Yeah, indeed, that's exactly right. So, we, you know, enabling clients to set, set a baseline year, which is, you know, a, a year in which you're comparing your emissions to, and then make forecasts and set targets on the back of that, and then make portfolio decisions in order to, to hit those forecasts and hit those targets. I think that's extremely important. So you're absolutely right, Andrew, it's, this is not a, a static system. This is a system that should be used the year round to keep clients on a particular pathway to have a real impact on, on, on global emissions and to forecast and, and target so they can take action to, to mitigate emissions. 
So yeah, you know, looking forward, Barry, what what what's coming up in your roadmap in terms of the solution? What can clients look forward to in terms of additional functionality and additional uh, power? So I think I think the, the the main thing that we're aiming towards right now is is you know to become the number one data provider across at first the EU and the UK, such that you know getting data in any country on any building at a, at a high level of accuracy with with no data gaps is is very very important and, and we see that as kind of our number one priority i think beyond that you know with in terms of the functionality of the platform i think even better target setting to enable customers to identify which assets might become stranded in the future so they may not be looking as if they might become stranded now but relative to the rest of the, the portfolio and how is that moving which assets could become stranded in the future we're also um, making it much more easy for clients to identify where the low quality data in their portfolio is. And we have calculations and methodologies which are all GHG compliant, which enable customers to fill that data. And then I think finally, it's, it's around data access and, and sharing. As I mentioned earlier, tenants are beginning, tenants of buildings are beginning to demand this data. So building the facility to enable real estate owners to share that data with tenants so that they themselves can start to take actions and talk to their employees about that. We think that's really important. So we're, we're, we're building that as well. And I guess it is an obvious statement in some respects, but I guess the challenge as you become more international and, and, and deal with more jurisdictions, you bump into some of these kind of issues of different qualities of data and different availability of data in different jurisdictions, which I guess is one of these big challenges, particularly obviously for international asset managers to be able to deal with a patchwork of, of different countries with slightly different versions of data and slightly different regimes around EPCs and things like that. Yeah, indeed, it's extremely con con uh, complicated, and it's um, it's quite interesting, you know, how few entities are are pulling this data together. It's it's really a um, relatively embryonic industry, and, and I think it it just has it has such huge potential. And I think the real estate sector is is doing a great job at um, taking early action around this and, and we've had some extremely positive conversations with clients and and other stakeholders in, in the real estate sector around building this business across the eu so it's uh, it's super exciting indeed indeed well it's been fascinating to talk and obviously it's, it's such a critical subject that this whole area of esg for real estate given unfortunately the negative impacts the sector has but obviously the opportunity to turn that around and and because i'm you know become a much more positive contributor to, to the whole sustainability agenda but for today barry thanks ever so much for your time and i look forward to catching up again in the future you're very welcome andrew thank you so much for having me pleasure